and welcome back to the Dreamcast. I am your host, Denise Walsh. I combine science, scripture, and stories that will inspire you to dive deep, break through your own personal glass ceiling, and design a life of your dreams. Are you overworked, overstressed, and overwhelmed? You want life to be different, but you don't even know how to get there. Man, oh man, I lived there myself. And in my experience with working with thousands of people from all walks of life, there is one simple thing that holds so many of us back, a lack of time management. We may know what we want, but we often don't know how to get there and don't feel like we can add one more thing into our already busy day. And that's exactly why I created the Dream Life Action Planner. It's a 90-day inspired game plan that will give you total clarity on your greatest priorities and skyrocket your productivity on the tasks that matter most. And now, for a limited time, you can get your own copy for free. And when you go to denisewalsh.com slash action. Denise Walsh, D-E-N-I-S-E-W-A-L-S-H dot com slash action, A-C-T-I-O-N. Put your information in and we will send this action planner directly to your inbox so you can set your goals, reprioritize your calendar, and design your dream life today. Welcome, welcome back to the Dreamcast. As you probably have experienced in our fast-paced society, people are looking for direction and seeking fulfillment, oftentimes from outside resources. I know for me, when I was wrestling with what to do next, I was seeking signs or answers from everything outside of myself. And what often we fail to understand is that the wealthiest place in the world resides within us. As an inspirational author, speaker, and human behavior expert over 17 years, our next guest is passionate about helping people harness their dreams and leverage their strengths to change the world. With a refreshing approach, she brings actionable strategies to win in life and relationships. She is also a member of the teaching faculty for the Global John Maxwell team and DISC certified trainer and is recognized for her experience in communication and personal leadership development. A big dream cast welcome to Tanya Telesco. Awesome. Thank you, Denise. It's a joy to be here. Well, I am really excited to connect with you today because we have a lot in common. When I was a clinical psychologist looking for my next step, I did exactly what your introduction (laughs) um, (laughs) says most people do, which is look outside (laughs) ourselves for answers, wondering what do we do next. Yet you say we have all of the resources inside of us. So Tell me, before we dive into what you're doing now, I'd love to hear a bit of your story and how you came to this conclusion. Oh my goodness, Denise, you know, the journey just started way back and I never had, I didn't have a lot of tragedy or anything in my life. Actually, I had a beautiful life. I was raised up in a wonderful family with a strong faith narrative, strong values. I mean, just a present mom and dad that will full force in the ministry. But I just remember getting ready to graduate from high school and just thinking, what I'm going to do? <laughs> it's so funny. I, I think back and I think, wow, there's a lot of people that won't relate to this. But Denise, I remember before going to college, pulling out the Yellow Pages, which was a book that had phone numbers and businesses <laughs> in it, and thumbing through there thinking, okay, what in here looks good? What can I major on? And just not having, knowing how to connect the dots. And so um, long story short, I went to college, three different colleges, probably changed my major five different times, junior year, and I'm just frustrated. And I remember going, I was home for church one weekend and I walked in the door and I saw Kathleen. And Kathleen was this beautiful woman and she was a flight attendant with American Airlines going on a flight. And she was decked out in this, her, you know, American Airlines uniform, high heels, makeup, something out of a magazine. And all I could think about was she gets to travel the world, dress up and get paid for it. Holy cow. And I kid you not, within 30 days, I quit college and said, I'm going to be a flight attendant. So I did that and um, (laughs) absolutely hated it, (laughs) but did that for two years, was shipped to Washington, D.C., 
And I just was so unsatisfied. And then from there, I ended up landing some amazing jobs uh, in surgical sales for about three years, then went on to um, software sales in the computer industry. And I mean, tore it up. But Denise, I tell you what, I couldn't be any more miserable other than my joy in the Lord and who I was. I was never a depressed person but I was so unfulfilled because what I didn't know was that I had chosen success over significance. And, you know, success is something that we do for ourselves and significance is how we live for others. And I didn't know how to connect the dots. I didn't know how to live out of my creative value and what I was born to do. And, you know, so that's the two biggest questions is that I so want women to answer is who am I? And why am I here? Because you can answer two, those two questions, then they will change your legacy, you know, and in this life that how the world teaches us how to make a living, but they don't show us how to build a legacy. And so that was the beginning of my journey. Long story short, I was meeting a client at a corporate building and going up the elevator. And I was just having this out of body experience of like, I can't do this anymore. I am dying. I am not doing what I live for. And I, and I had just been given a company car and a huge promotion. And on the outside, it looked beautiful. But what I realized is that even if I climbed that ladder to the very top, that this was not my dream, you know, maybe somebody else's, but it was not mine. And so um, it was after that meeting, about three days later, I mustered up all the courage. I called my parents first, <laughs> Denise, and I said, can I move in the barn with the horses if this doesn't work out? Because I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm done here. I'm done and I'm hanging it up. And so um, I resigned. And I tell you what, it was that day that I walked into my boss's office and walked out that I walked off my map. And so that's my huge message for women is that they've got to walk off their map and before they can land the destiny and the calling that God has for them. So that was kind of in a nutshell. <laughs> wow. Well, we can dive into lots of pieces of your story because you went from place of confusion, jumping from job to job to job, doing what the world tells us to do as successful, right? Making money, mm -hmm. traveling, living the dream, doing all the things, but yet your soul was restless. Your soul was saying, no, 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 Tanya, this mm -hmm. isn't it. This isn't it. This isn't That's it. Right. And I feel like we have that restlessness feeling. We have that ready for more. We have that ready to, you know, mm -hmm. to, to step into something else, but we still have the human will choice to decide to right. listen to it or, or to not. And you did something that a lot of people don't have the courage to do is you mm -hmm. did a cold, hard stop and said, mm -hmm. all right, this isn't it. So I'm going to do something else. Mm -hmm. And you call it walking off your map. Tell me a bit about what that means. Yes, ma'am. Well, you know, my uh, dad growing up, we did a lot of outdoor things. I mean, we're outdoor family. And one of my favorite traditions, Denise, was he would always have storytelling time with his girls. I mean, so we would have a campfire, be by a tree or wherever it was with the bugs. And dad was telling stories. And a lot of times they were Bible stories. But a lot of times, you know, he just he's a storyteller, still is. And one of my favorite stories was about Alexander the Great and the story of how Alexander, I mean, he was one of the greatest leaders the world has ever known. And when he was crossing the Himalayan mountains, one of his soldiers walked up to him and said, sir, we have to turn around and go home because we have walked off our map and we are moving into territory that nobody has ever seen. And Alexander looked at him, Denise, and he said, young man, mediocre armies stay within the known areas, but great armies and great men walk off their map. And he got off his horse, he took it by its lead, and he crossed the river. And that day he walked off his map. And so I think it's just you know what, walking into our destiny and what God has for us, it is going to be stinking scary and it's going to be uncomfortable and it's going to be so many things that are unknown to us. And yet that is where the promised land is, I believe. And guess what? As you know, it never ends. <laughs> We're always crossing the river, right? <laughs> we are. We're always learning and growing and trying new mm -hmm. things and experiencing that fear all over again. And I often say, I tell my clients, if you're not experiencing a bit of fear, you're probably bored. And that's, that's right. no place to live either. <laughs> that's right. That's right. 
All right. Well, there's two things needed in order to cross the river or, or maybe you don't need mm -hmm. them when you cross, but you get to figure it out once you are on the other side. And that's clarity and passion, because for a while you were confused and you mm -hmm. were doing the things, but it wasn't fulfilling to your soul. Let's talk a bit about clarity of purpose. How did you quit your job mm -hmm. and then figure out, all right, what am I supposed to do next? And how do mm -hmm. I have a clear vision for something that I don't quite know what it is going to be yet? Sure. I think the biggest component of this is really identity. I think there is such an assault on our identity as Christians and in, in especially Christian women of who they are and what's inside of them and what God has given them. One of the big pieces of that, I mean, I put a hard stop and I went to Bible college for two years and I said, you know what? I have ridden on the coattail of my parents' faith for decades and it's time to know what I believe and why I believe it. And so that was a journey I took myself on because I so believe that when we know who we are in him, we become unstoppable on what we do on the outside when we know who we are on the inside. And so, um. That is something, and I'm working on resources right now so that women can get so grounded in who they are. That is the first piece. One of the big pieces of that puzzle for me was before I left for uh, Bible college, my sister was going through a horrible divorce and um, she moved in with her five kids. So we had nine of us <laughs> living under a not so large roof. And um, my parents and I were taking a counseling course. We had heard of personality assessments and all that. Most people have, but we were required in this to take the DISC personality assessment. And Denise, it was crazy. It was just like, it was like we hit the watery because, you know, we had to dig into it deeper and understand ourselves. But my parents had been married for 35 years, moved from a place of toleration to celebration because they knew how to breathe life into each other's needs. So there was that piece of it. The other piece of it, when you talk about clarity, is for the first time we had a real understanding of how we were wired and how we were made. All those things that I was pursuing in my life, my strengths, my fears, my motivations, had, were not in an alignment whatsoever with the things that I was pursuing. And so that piece of clarity, it is so huge to understand you and your creative design because it takes out the guesswork. And most people are doing things that are not in alignment with what they were made to do or how they were built. So that's one of the first pieces of the clarity that I think is huge is don't try to guess, pinpoint your strengths. And so that personality assessment, so I ended up digging into that for years and helping people with that. Um, that was a, a piece of my journey. So I think that's one of the first steps. Well, it really is. I think oftentimes we second guess our strengths or we don't mm -hmm. think they're important because we think everybody else has those same desires, those same strengths, those mm -hmm. same motivations. We just often don't think we're special. So yes. we, we count ourselves out a bit. Mm -hmm. And so really taking a look at what do you like? What are your joys? What gets mm -hmm. you up in the morning? What would your ideal day look like? What would your ideal peaceful world look like? Yeah. Asking yourself these questions can help you gain clarity on what's mm -hmm. most important to you. And then you can ask yourself, is what I'm doing fulfilling some of these life purposes mm -hmm. or impact? You know, is, is it in alignment? Like you said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I just believe that your personality is always connected to your purpose. And so if we can get that, that purpose piece, um, and you know, and it's always an unveiling, but I just so believe like you do, I mean, that's probably a separate topic, but getting that vision and reverse engineering your life is almost magical. I mean, when you know why you're here and what you're supposed to do, it just takes out, you're able to say no to the good and yes to the great because you know that you're headed somewhere on purpose. And so that's why I am so passionate about helping women saying, let's get clarity on these two pieces because we can reverse engineer, live backwards, and it's going to take out, it's going to bring discipline, it's going to bring the right relationships, it's going to bring healthy choices, because all that is attached to having clarity, so... Yeah. If you don't know what you want, you're certainly not going to get it. You That's know? right. And so spending some time on this clarity piece is important. I also love that you said it's tied to our identity because what mm -hmm. I find is that we live out of our identity, meaning we make decisions. Mm -hmm. We have habits based on who we believe we are. Mm -hmm. So if we believe we're overweight, 
and we're unhealthy and that's kind of our self-identity, then mm -hmm. that's going to impact the choices we make. And if we believe otherwise, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I love that you uh, mentioned that because your belief of self impacts your belief of the world, which impacts that's how you right. take action within it. And mm -hmm. so you, you say, hard stop. All right, this is not working. You go to Bible college, you end up working with a personality, the DISC. Uh, tell mm -hmm. me a bit about how you identified this genuine passion versus mm -hmm. an interest. Or maybe you were like excited about what you were doing, but there were days mm -hmm. when you were tired and you wondered or you second guessed and you were unsure. How did you know that you know that you know that this is where you're supposed to be going? You know what I mean? Yes. I think so many times we think, is this God's will, my will? Is this yes. what I'm supposed to be doing or not? I had a bad day, what does that mean? You know what I mean? It's, it's <laughs> right. confusing. Yes, absolutely. And because I spent so many years pursuing the wrong things, you know, when you finally hit that sweet spot, you know, because it feels and it looks and it is so different. My goodness, gosh, Denise, it's, what I like to, to share is that there are different kinds of passion. And the three main ones that I like to talk about is that there is a personal passion. And, and those are those things that we like to do, like hobbies, you know, everything from reading to dancing to shopping to sports to whatever those things are that really refresh us so that is a personal passion and they're not bad it's just that they're kind of makes us the center of the universe the second kind of passion is a general passion an example of that i like to share is how many times have we been watching tv and we see one of those infomercials of those sweet african children and you're just this starving children and you're like oh my gosh and it breaks your heart and you're just kind of like, somebody ought to do something about that, you know? And maybe you sign up and you send some money and then you turn the channel and watch Netflix and you don't have another thought about it. And that's because it's a general passion. It's not that it's not a real need. It's just not the one that you're called to. The last one that I want people to get in touch with and connect to is what we call genuine passion. And genuine passion is that thing. And there's two ways to help people find it is genuine passion is that thing that if you don't do something about it before you leave this earth, you're going to have a lot of regret. And the way that we find that, first of all, it can be identified through gifts. You know, I like to tell people the world is not looking for you and the world is not looking for me. The world is looking for your gift. And so if you have certain gifts, whether it be engineering or science or dancing or athletics, a lot of times it can be highlighted that way. Another way, Denise, that we can identify genuine passion is through maybe an experience that we had ourselves that was very emotional and hardcore that we walked through, or maybe someone close to us walked through. And I mean, there's hundreds of things. It could be anything from alcoholism to drugs to sex trafficking to, you know, just walking through motherhood or health and fitness and transformation that way. But it's something that changed our life. And we think, you know what, if there's one thing in the world that I could stop people from ever having to go through what I went through or someone close to me went through, what would that be? And so, of course, there's those array of questions that we ask ourselves to help dig deep to get the answer to that genuine passion. Mm -hmm. It's the thing that keeps you up at night. It's like it that is. fire in your belly. And that you can do for hours at a time and focus on and feel like, where did the time go and where did the day? Yeah. And that's when it's no longer a job. It's no longer employment. It's deployment into what you were made for. So I often say our why is born out of a blessing or a burden. Yes, you know? that's it. That's absolutely it. And somewhere between what makes you tick and what ticks you off. <laughs> is going to be what you're called to. Yeah. So. Yeah. And and I think, again, that's something to honor, like, right? Yes. Because we often think that everybody has that. But no, they don't. No. Guys, what makes you yeah. mad? What ticks you off? What creates that fire in your belly? What are some things that you get passionate about, that you get mm -hmm. on a soapbox about? Because that's yes. something that you were called to influence. That's right. That's right. And it's not everything. And, th and that's one of the biggest things. It's like, there's so many good things that we need to be passionate. But no, I like to say it's one specific thing that you are called to make massive impact in, massive. And it doesn't mean that you have to start a movement, but it means that you're supposed to be part of something, 
You know, I heard, Denise, it was a few weeks ago that the most reserved person in the world will affect 10,000 people in their lifetime. That's a whole lot of people. And that's not even with intentionality. So think about if we begin to identify those things, it could be hundreds of thousands. Yeah. Well, and I think sometimes people start to dream and they think all of a sudden they need to be Oprah and they need to write books and they need to be on stages or they need to do big and powerful, grand things. When truly starting a small group at your church or starting a meal train for new mothers in your area or, you know, it doesn't have to be big and grand and bold because the Mm -hmm. domino effect of listening to your heart in your community can really be a powerful place to start. That's right. Absolutely. I so believe in, in there and I see so many people, they want to be discovered, but they don't want to be developed. And so they won't take those just it's those daily small steps that change our history and other people's history. It's not the big, massive things that happen. That's my favorite John Maxwell law is the law of process. That and that's where identity comes in, right? We begin right. to walk in a stronger awareness of our identity when we begin to do things that we've never done. So I yeah. often, I heard when in my psychology days that you become a lot of who you will be by the time you're 23 or 24 is when we've kind of mm-hmm. solidified a lot mm-hmm. of our habits. And so throughout college, I was like, I need to be the best 23-year-old ever. And so I woke up in the morning and worked out. And I was like, my habits today make a difference. And so 20 years later, I still have a lot of those habits I made intentional in college. And I truly do believe Mm -hmm. it's that small stuff compacted over time that makes Mm -hmm. such a big difference. It does. Gosh, and you're so blessed to walk in that so young because I didn't, Denise, I tell you what, I didn't even know what personal growth was. That's a whole other supernatural story, but I didn't even know what that was. And it was when, now I didn't meet my husband until I was in my late forties and I'd never been engaged. I hadn't dated in um, over a decade. And cause I was just like seeing people that are seeing women. I was happier than most people who were married. And so why was I compromised? And I had a wonderful father. But I tell you what, as I begin to get a hold of what you got a hold of younger and take the steps that were leading into the destiny that God had for me, it led me straight to my husband who proposed on stage at John Maxwell in front of 10,000 people. But that, in that, so that's not about me. That is about that. As you begin to implement principles that your dreams have no expiration date because I was double the age of getting, I knew the word of God and I loved it and experienced it, but it was personal development and the inner game of showing me how to walk that wisdom out every day that changed my history. So I love that. You don't have to be 23 to develop habits that impact your life. No, at any time you can decide, right. Mm -hmm. That you truly want to make that hard stop and say, all right, this isn't working for me Mm -hmm. anymore. Something's got to change and and make those changes one step at a time. Mm -hmm. A couple last questions. I know that you have been in ministry. You've been doing a lot of work, um, general work, but you have recently said, I want to impact women. Tell Mm -hmm. me about what your heart has called you to now. Yes, absolutely. You know, I think that was one of the biggest things I struggled with. I'm like, well, you know, they say define that avatar and all that. And it's more, I think, really about listening to your heart. Because I always kind of felt like, well, if I just focus on women, then I lose, you know, so much of the population, even Christian women. But what I learned is that as I began to hold some seminars and do some things, Denise, I really discovered that they were the hungry ones. And I'm not saying that men aren't hungry, But I just be, you know, as I was seeking God about that, I said, God, show me what you've called me to, because I know the power of clarity. I know what that, that it is. So actually my mom began teaming up with me. My mom is 74 and one of the most amazing pioneers that you have. I mean, she's a legacy. She's in two hall of fames and just a midwife delivered over a thousand babies at home. So her life modeled so much for me. She held a women's Bible study for 14 years But as I began to look back and really reflect, I was like, I knew there was a legacy piece there that the Lord was asking me to carry on. But my heart just began to melt more as I began to meet with more women that there was a hunger, but there was such a disengagement with their life. 
and that the way I would talk to a woman and minister the woman, it's just a little bit different than how you would be in a woman to a man, right? And so God just began to break my heart for them. And I'm sure this is men to Denise, but you know, the three things that I see that hold women back so much from walking in to their dreams is comparison, perfection, and procrastination. And so being able to, to really speak that into their life and what that looks like for us as women is different than it would for men. And so that's when uh, I just really be dig digging in to that piece. So that's where I'm at mm. full force. So, yeah. Well, the disengagement is an interesting place, right? How many times mm. do we feel like we're going through the motions, but we're not engaged oh, yeah. in our life? When I was working full time, we started our business 13 years ago and I was able to quit my job over a decade ago. So we've been entrepreneurs for over a decade, thankfully. But during my working days, I remember going through the motions, living for the weekend and yes. just not, you know, kind of being out of body a bit, like not going through, you know, just doing the things, yes. but not enjoying it or being intentional with it. And do you find that a lot of the women you work with are similar? Oh my goodness. Most of them. And I think a, a lot, not all. I think that's why it's so important to get in a community of both. You got to, as you know, the quote by Jim Rohn that says you become the five people that you hang around with, right? And so it's not saying that you need to exchange your friends, but you need to so surround yourself by women. It not, it's not about having it all together. It's about being surrounded by people who believe in you more than you believe in yourself and what you're called to. But what I have found, I really believe, Denise, that a majority of the population, especially Christian women, have not known how to connect their dots. And they are just going through the motions. And sometimes I feel like, sometimes I feel like I'm here to introduce Christ to the Christians because we really have watered down all that he has done for us in this life. We don't need it in the next life. We've got it made there. It's here that he wants us to tap in to all that he has for us. That's the price that was paid. And so that's why knowing that you are a daughter of the king and really getting that at a deep level, what it means to meditate and what it means to have gratitude and what it means to affirm, those are the game changers. And I think women need that now more than ever, especially with what's going on, you know. Absolutely. So. Well, it's, it's time to really ignite that spark and, and to yes. live with that alignment because I often will think, oh, maybe I'll just be a mom and not, you know, if you're like, oh, this is hard or whatever it is. And not that being a mom mm -hmm. isn't a, an amazing calling. Um, I love my boys and I um, love working from home so I mm -hmm. can really be around them all the time. But I often find that laundry isn't my spark. <laughs> <laughs> But when I'm recording podcasts yes. like this, or I'm doing coaching calls, or I'm on stage and leading workshops, I'm like, this is my spark, you know, yes. so I want to yes. continue to keep my spark alive. Yes. And I find that if I don't, it's a disservice, not only to me, but to the people in my community. You know, Denise, I say, um, because, oh my goodness, I married a dream boat. I mean, he does the laundry, he does the grocery shop. Bless his heart. He's kind of lets me just live my single, you know, now I'm not saying that's a good thing. But I also always say, develop your strengths, but outsource your weaknesses, right? <laughs> so exactly. Like, God, <laughs> you are so good that you sent me a man that enables me to outsource. <laughs> <laughs> but I so believe that we can spend a majority of our lives doing what sets us on fire. And it's just finding out what that is for you, because there is, there is something for everyone. We just have to do a little of the digging, right? We just have to dig up the treasure. Absolutely. Uh, and you have written a book called Walking Out of Your Map. Yes, yes. Seven Keys to an Extraordinary Life. And those are just those pillars that were the game changers for me. Walking Off Your Map. Is this on Amazon? Yes, it sure is. Amazon and the website. Oh, perfect. So, yes. TanyaTelesco.com. And then also Be the Exception. What is Be the Exception about? Yes. So Be the Exception was me and my husband's first work together. And, you know, two of the things, Denise, when I was reinventing my life at a little bit older age, two of the most important things I got a hold of was, number one, that to live differently, I was going to have to think differently. And number two, that I was only going to get as good as the questions that I asked myself. And so this little book, We Love, 
because it's the walking off your map is faith-based. We use be the exception in marketplace, but you can take, even if you're not a reader, and we wrote that with a deadline to give it as a gift on our wedding day. So it was really cool. It was released on our wedding day, which was really neat. Oh, that is so Isn't special. That cool? Yeah, that's super special. Well, cool. Well, I've got two last questions for you. Um, you guys, I know that you have been loving this conversation as much as I have. And you're probably asking yourself the question, what is my strength? What is my passion? How do I ask myself good questions mm -hmm. to dig deep so I can truly reconnect with that spark? And Tanya has created an Ignite your passion freebie for you. And you can get that at tanyatelesco.com. All of the links will be in the show notes below. So Tanya, my last two questions are, we know that in order to break through our own personal glass ceiling, mm -hmm. continue to rise up, we don't do it alone. So I'd love to hear who you've learned from, books you've read, or mm -hmm. anything that you consistently refer people to. Yes, of course, John Maxwell has been a huge mentor in my life. So Intentional Living is one of my favorite books that he wrote, Intentional Living. Of course, 15 Laws of Growth was what I cut my teeth on. That was my introduction to that. One of my favorite mentors who is not with us anymore is Miles Monroe. And I listen to him every, probably about six days a week, Denise. But Miles has truly changed the trajectory, not just of my personal growth, but of my faith. So those two are huge ones for me. I love probably that. the two biggest, yeah. And then we also know that in order to give and and be a service-based person, you do need to keep yourself filled up because we cannot pour from an empty mm -hmm. cup. So what is one thing you do every day that you couldn't live without? Oh my goodness, my gratitude journal. <laughs> well, of course, my, my faith-based time in the morning is precious to me. So that's just me, where me and God sit down and have, I'm not a coffee drinker, but I would say coffee. And then just really reflecting over what he's done in my life in the last 24 hours. So I've done that for over 20 years. And um. That's been um, a precious time for me. I think a game changer. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. When our eyes are focused on gratitude, we see more good things around That's us, right. don't we? Yes, absolutely. So what products or services do you have right now that people can tap into alongside your books? Actually, I'm working on my biggest and, and most favorite, but it's, it's still a work in progress. It should be done in about six weeks. We're really pivoting now. Tom and I do a lot of training. He does a lot more coaching, Denise. I love holding the seminars. So right now I'm just in that mode of creating those online seminars, which will be on the website soon. I did everything live. I like to be live and in person. I know, <laughs> I know. I'm going to have a major hug fest when all this <laughs> is over. <laughs> but right now, probably just keep your lookout for the product that's coming up in the next couple months. So that is going to be huge on walking in purpose and identity and with the Kings. So yeah. Mm, I love that. Well, good for you for pivoting and figuring out the tech yes. stuff so you can create an yes. online program. <laughs> yes, we're starting our challenges and just had our first one this last week, which is phenomenal. So, um, and, and the challenges have been a great thing to do. So I just like to just that in person in touch. So yeah, we're just learning to pivot. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, first of all, Tanya, thank you so much for saying yes to your spark for yeah. continuing to tap into your own destiny, because I feel like as you tap into yours, you are giving people permission and space to tap into theirs. So you're really giving mm -hmm. them a roadmap to follow so they can step off their current map yes. and step into the unknown, which can feel scary and it can feel uncertain, but because you've done it and you're sharing your mm -hmm. experience, it gives people confidence that they can do it too. So you guys, if you're ready to take a step in a new direction, but you are a bit confused or unsure or, un, you know, yes. in, in this wishy-washy place, go to tanyatelesco.com and get her freebie, Ignite Your Passion, because we know that clarity is mm -hmm. king. Uh, and once you figure out who you are and what you are here for, the rest is unstoppable. So thank you so much, Tanya, for your time today. I have so enjoyed our conversation. Guys, check her out at tanyatelesco.com. 
Thanks so much for hanging out with us today. I want to hear your aha moment from today's amazing episode. If you could leave a review at whatever podcast player you choose to listen from, Apple Podcast, CastBox, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you're listening from, leave a review and share with us your favorite part of today's episode. Thanks for hanging out. And remember to dream big.